Hi everyone, and welcome. My name is Dale, and this is the latest video in a series of videos dedicated to helping those interested in theatrical design or technical theater get into college programs, get internships, and get jobs. In other videos, I've primarily focused on the physical portfolio. Well, today, we're gonna focus on the digital portfolio. How it's different, but still similar, to a physical portfolio. If you haven't watched my video on the portfolio basics, I would recommend that you do that as I'm gonna talk about a lot of things that are gonna to relate to that video. Um, so if you haven't done that, I recommend you check that video out. Uh, but now let's talk about digital portfolios. So just like a physical portfolio, it's important to define what exactly it is we're talking about with the digital portfolio. The purpose of the portfolio doesn't change just because it's digital, but the medium that you're using to tell your design or technical story will. Speaking of medium, the next thing to think about is that a digital portfolio is not a website. I mean, it can be a website, it can be housed on a website, but it shouldn't only be a website. A digital portfolio is typically a digital file that you can send out to prospective colleges, universities, um, hiring programs, so that you can get the jobs that you're looking for or get into the college programs that you're looking for. I personally prefer using a program similar to PowerPoint or Google Slides, where you can use the slides essentially as pieces of paper that you can build your portfolio on. We'll talk a little bit more about constructing the portfolio in the next part of the video, but choosing the program you want to use will set up how your portfolio looks and how the people looking at it will interact with it. It's a good place to start when you're thinking about where do I begin when I'm thinking about making a digital portfolio. Now I know I do a whole segment in my basics video about my preference for physical portfolios over digital portfolios. And that's still true when the presentation of the portfolio is in person. That is incredibly important. When the presentation of the portfolio is in person, it is much more challenging to present a digital portfolio that's restricted to a screen. However, if you're doing a digital portfolio submission, you need to build it differently. It is a different modicum of presentation and should be approached in a different way. A lot of the rules might still apply in like different ways, but you can't just take your portfolio pages from a physical portfolio, scan them, send them as a digital portfolio and expect to get the same kind of results as if you constructed the portfolio on its own as a digital portfolio to start with. Constructing your digital portfolio is going to depend a little on what material you're presenting. Uh, if you're a designer, you would probably structure your portfolio a little differently than if you're a technician. This is different than if we were doing a physical portfolio. But before we get into that, some of the same rules for physical portfolios still apply to digital portfolios. You'll still want a splash page or something similar to that. This is gonna be an introductory slide that is gonna show off your name, what it is that the portfolio is about, essentially what do you do, what is your uh, theater goal, do you wanna be a designer, do you wanna be a specific kind of technician, a director, a stage manager. Make sure that you're listing that there. And then some kind of image that's going to relate to that. Um, you doing the job that you're looking for, a really nice production photo, that kind of thing. You want to encourage whoever is looking at your portfolio to scroll down to look at the next slide. Uh, you also want to adhere to the labels rule. Your name and the project title on every single slide. Because the viewing area is gonna be smaller in a digital portfolio than in a physical portfolio, the viewer's only gonna be able to see one page at a time instead of the standard book style that we look at when we're doing a physical portfolio. You wanna make sure that it's really clear what they're looking at and who you are at every point in your digital portfolio presentation. So 
So for some portfolio construction recommendations, I'm gonna kind of start with what I call the design category. It's a little limiting because I would also lump directors and management into this category as well. Uh, so for this design category, you wanna think about your shows in roughly four to five slides. Uh, unlike a physical portfolio where I'm like, even pages all the time, don't ever have one show and another show overlap in the visual medium. That's not really an issue in the uh, digital portfolio because you're only gonna be looking at one slide at a time anyway. For the first two to three slides, you wanna include your paperwork as well as a production photo that kind of relates in some way to the paperwork that you're representing. It doesn't mean that those two things completely align, but there should be some connection between the two. This tends to be a little bit easier for mediums like uh, management, directing, scenic design, costume design, things that are a little bit more physical in regards to their execution. Lighting, sound, uh, projections even a little bit can be a little more flexible on this, but you should still have some considerations of which production photos are going to work best with which piece of paperwork do you want to present. Once you've gone through those first couple of slides, those two to three slides, with your paperwork and a production photo. Then you can move on to slides that only have production photos. So you're kind of getting through the business end of your portfolio show project at the beginning. And then at the end, you can include some additional production photos that are gonna help highlight the scale of the production, the complexity of the production, or your specific skill set that was utilized during the production. For technicians, you want to be a little bit more focused on the specific elements of the show you worked on as opposed to the project as a whole. So if, say, you were props for a show, you would want all the materials for a specific prop essentially contained within one slide. So that would include your research, drawings, process photos, and a really nice clean production photo that demonstrates that particular prop used in the show. This can seem like a lot to include in one slide, and it can be. So you really have to be careful about how you include those pieces. And if you include all of those elements for every single item. Yes, you would generally want to include all of those, but you also want to make sure that you're not scrunching and overlapping and, and making the page so full of content that the person who's looking at it can't figure out what it is and you can't follow what story it is you're telling about the prop from research concept all the way through production product. So really you have to be careful with those kinds of things. Um, you can also include the overall production paperwork. So for props again, you would maybe have a props list that you could include. In that instance, I would make sure that I'm combining that with a production photo that has a lot of the props in use on stage, or uh, I always love to see photos of props tables all taped out. I think that that's a really fun juxtaposition with a props list. Here's the list of the props, here's how they were all laid out backstage and all of them. And then go through your slides and have, here's a specific prop that I worked on and here's the process it took to get here and here's how it was used in the show. Unlike a physical portfolio, which you will always present in person, the digital portfolio will be viewed without you being there to explain and talk about the material in there. So you really wanna make sure that whatever you include in your digital portfolio can stand on its own. Um, this is not a call to have narration within your portfolio. If the process photos, the imagery, the paperwork can't stand on their own, then you may think about not including them in your portfolio at all. Uh, you just wanna make sure that as people look through, they understand the story that you're telling about which elements of the show you worked on and what your part in the whole production was without having to have, this is this prop, it was used for this thing. Trust your audience a little bit. 
most of the people looking at your portfolio are going to be familiar with the shows that you're presenting and they'll understand this is a prop it was used for this particular scene or this is a really uh, cool scenic construction element that tripped and did this thing for this showing us images of those things process shots drawings uh, production photos can tell that story just as well without having to narrate it for your audience with text and taking up all of that additional space. For a lot of people, digital can sometimes mean <laughs> limitless. There aren't any restrictions on how many slides you can use as there would be for a physical portfolio with the number of pages that are included. However, you don't want to lose your audience in a sea of too much information. Just because you can include more doesn't mean you should. Bigger is still better when it comes to what you include in your slides. The larger you can make your paperwork or the photos, the easier it's going to be for the people looking at it to understand what it is you're trying to communicate. Trying to cram too many things onto a single slide is only going to make everything small, the details more difficult to see, and it's going to feel crowded and overwhelming to someone looking at it. You need to give your, your images, the content that you're putting on your portfolio, space to breathe within the visual area, some space within. We need a guide to how we get from one part of the process to another. If everything is all crammed in, it can be really, really challenging. And again, this is, this is something that for technical can get a little more difficult than maybe for someone in that design category, but it is still something everyone should think about because it's a trap that we can all fall into. It's also easy to say, hey, now I can include all of these photos that I wasn't able to include in my, my physical portfolio because now I have all of this limitless digital space. And that again is uh, a trap that's really easy to fall into. Um, my general rule is if it doesn't make the cut for your physical portfolio, you probably don't need to include it in your digital portfolio. It's not always the case. There might be this one photo that you're like, oh, if only I could have found the space on this page, I would have loved to include it. And you have the opportunity to do that in your digital portfolio, but just make sure that you're not, oh, and this photo, oh, and this photo. Um, I mentioned in my uh, physical portfolio videos that I generally have anywhere between four to five actual physical production photos in my portfolio. And that generally is enough to tell the story of the show. I don't need a photo from every single scene or every single moment. I need the ones that are going to help best tell my story. And that's a really good kind of place to start with your digital portfolio as well. You also don't have to, and probably shouldn't, include every piece of paperwork for every show if you make sure that that piece of paperwork for your area of focus is displayed at least once throughout the whole portfolio. The more projects you have, the more repetitions we'll see, but I don't need to see a ground plan for every scenic design or a prop list for every props design. There are a lot of other paperwork options and support that I want to see for the show and a picture of a model or front elevations or paint elevations are also a really good way to show me that you have that broad skill set and to give me details about the scenery that I'm seeing in the production photos. Ground plans are great but there are a lot of other pieces of paperwork that are used to create this design. I want to be able to see all of them but maybe not all of them for every show. The background you choose to display your work on is also important. Just as with the physical portfolio, you don't want your paper or slide background to draw focus from your actual portfolio content. Unlike paper, I don't really think a black background is always the right choice. Depends on what you're putting onto the slides and how you're laying that out on the page. Uh, but something neutral is generally a good idea. I would generally recommend avoiding white for the same reasons that we would recommend not using white paper for a physical portfolio. It doesn't look as professional. Your material, especially paperwork material, is not gonna read as well on a white background. So I would avoid white. 
um, something like a dark or a medium tone gray or a medium tone tan. Avoid getting too light in color. Um, darker colors are fine, but if you're using production photos, the darker it is, the more the edges of your photo will blend out into that. So you just want to kind of test the waters. I also uh, would recommend avoiding any design backgrounds on your slides. Uh, just a reminder, a portfolio is not a scrapbook, whether it's physical or digital. So it doesn't need all of that extra stuff. The content that you're putting in is going to be more than enough to tell the story and to showcase what you can do as a designer or a technician. All right, I've gone on long enough about the risks of the digital portfolio. Let's talk about some of the benefits. Unlike a physical portfolio where materials can be a little challenging to constantly update, a digital portfolio can be constantly updated. Just drop in new images, uh, add new slides, add new material. You can also easily rearrange your digital portfolio by moving slides around, deleting slides that you no longer need based on the feedback you're getting from people looking at your portfolio and also the growth of yourself as an artist. The other thing that I love about digital portfolios is that it's super easy to have multiple iterations of your portfolio arranged in different ways so that you can apply for different types of jobs. If you are a stage manager who also likes to do props, you can have two different portfolios that essentially have the same content, but arrange them in different ways so that you can apply for those different jobs. You don't have to print out and physically construct and hold two different portfolios. You have the option of sending those out to whoever you want to and not necessarily having to box yourself into a specific choice. Uh, you can also crop images or paperwork within the course of the digital portfolio drop in something, size it to how you want to, you get a lot more flexibility in how much of my paperwork or how much of my photo can I use based on what else am I including on that page. This is really great for those technicians who are trying to include lots of different components on the page. By cropping and utilizing that particular editing aspect within the course of the page, you know exactly how much of that piece of paperwork or that image you want to show and you can do it live on the page as opposed to having to try and guess when you're printing out medium or cutting it with um, like your paper cutter to put in the physical portfolio. And then the last thing that I think is really great about digital portfolios is that you can embed audio and video in your digital portfolio. Uh, this is an awesome option and opportunity for people that do uh, sound production, video production, and honestly for a lot of other designers where you have something that's reactive, what happens within the show that you want to see. Um, a piece of scenery that has a transformation, a really uh, interesting lighting moment that happens with a piece of music, a prop that does a trick thing. Those are really cool pieces of video to include instead of a production photo. You want to be sparing with these. You don't want every single page to have a video that your viewer is going to have to click. Production photos are still important and still should be used, but this opportunity is really, really great. Um, you should know that it takes a little bit more steps than just putting the video into your slides. You have to do uh, a process of embedding the video or um, your, your person looking at it may not be able to, to view the video or hear the audio once you've actually um, exported the uh, portfolio as a, a PDF so that they can view it. So I started to touch on this at the end of the last segment, but it is incredibly important to only ever share your digital portfolio as a PDF. Don't ever share the physical file. There are a couple of reasons for this. Uh, if you share it as a PDF, it absolutely ensures that whoever's looking at your portfolio is going to look at it exactly the way that you want. The images are locked in in a specific order, the pages are locked in in a specific order, and those people can't go in and accidentally 
mess with the content of your portfolio. Um, it's something that is uh, a high risk if you actually put the physical like PowerPoint file or link to Google Slides into your portfolio submission. A PDF is the only way to go. You also don't run the risk of the person you're sending it to not having the program that you used and not being able to open the portfolio at all. I've actually had this happen um, to me. I, I didn't submit, but people have submitted to me. And whatever program that they use to create the portfolio is something that I don't have access to and my computer wouldn't open it and I couldn't see the files. So you just run that risk if you use the actual project file, export it as a PDF. Um, do all of the research on making sure that all of your materials will function. Test everything in the PDF before you send it out, uh, but the PDF is the way to go. You also don't run the risk of somebody taking your material and using it as their own. This is something that you probably aren't going to have as many issues with, but it is still something that you can avoid if you don't send the physical file and you only use the PDF. You don't want anyone to have access to your personal show materials without your permission. So those are my thoughts on putting together a top-notch digital portfolio. Uh, I hope that there was some helpful information in here for those of you working on constructing your digital portfolio for the first time, or even those who have had a digital portfolio for a while and are just looking for different ideas or a different perspective. Um, if you've got a digital portfolio and you found something that really works for you, whether it's a program or a construction method, please put it down in the comments section along with any other questions that you might have about the video. I'm sure that people who are looking at this video and thinking about putting together a uh, a digital portfolio would really appreciate any insights anyone else has uh, beyond my own. So I, I love when uh, people put that kind of insight into the comments. Please do that. We are a community of people that are collaborators and this is a really great way to do that. Um, it's been a while since I put one of these up. I was asked about this topic recently and I got really excited to kind of put my thoughts into the video. And so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves uh, and we'll see you backstage.